Hey everyone, it's uh, Brett Hornby here, and welcome back to my YouTube channel, and happy free agent frenzy as we're into 2021, a few weeks later than usual, unlike the usual Canada Day, but that's for obvious reasons. But as a Calgary Flames fan, let's recap what the Calgary Flames have done in the first couple days of free agent frenzy, and... What I feel like I'm going to do is that I'm going to do it in two videos as the Calgary Flames actually made a couple of trades that I figure that will deserve its own video. In a separate video, I'll talk about the actual signings. So before I get to talk about the trades for this video, if you want to follow along this Calgary sports fan's journey, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I mostly make videos talking about Calgary sports. As I'm about to give you my thoughts and opinions on the moves that the Calgary Flames have made now that free agent frenzy has opened going into the 2021-22 season. So anyway, let's talk about the two trades that the Calgary Flames made. One that happened just before 10 a.m. Mountain when free agent frenzy begins and another that happened later that same day. As coming in to free agent frenzy, I figured the Calgary Flames needed to find a top four defenseman to replace Mark Giordano after being claimed by the Seattle Kraken in the expansion draft. And I figured the Calgary Flames also were looking to find a new backup goalie as Jacob Markstrom has the net. However, he's not going to be able to play all 82 games. And given that uh, Louis Domingue didn't see much ice down the stretch, he won games mean nothing. I thought the Calgary Flames were going to be going in a different direction for a backup goalie, so I think they were able to address a couple of those holes for the trade route. So I'll bring up my notes and let's talk about the two trades that the Calgary Flames made and who they gave up. So the first trade that was made before a free agent frenzy opened at 10 a.m. Mountain or noon Eastern is the Calgary Flames. They made a trade with the Chicago Blackhawks. As the Calgary Flames, they traded that 2022 third round pick. And this third round pick that they traded to the Chicago Blackhawks was that extra third round pick that the Calgary Flames acquired from the Toronto Maple Leafs at the trade deadline for this past season for Dave Riddick. In exchange, the Calgary Flames acquired defenseman and Nikita Zaradov. And I would say he would definitely fulfill the top four role that the Calgary Flames need. Now Mark Giordano is away. However, it's just his negotiating signing rights as he is a restricted free agent. He has not signed officially with a new contract. But as I know, he was qualified for $3.2 million with the Chicago Blackhawks. So now that we have his signing rights, we have acquired Nikita Zarov. And actually, they gave him number 16 on the active roster. So... What I'm going to say with this pickup is he will fulfill more physicality and size that is left behind from Eric Giordano. I mean, he's a Russian defenseman born in April 16th, 1995. Originally, he was drafted in the first round by the Buffalo Sabres, 16th overall in 2013. Same draft that uh, current Flames Elias Lindholm and Sean Monaghan were drafted in. But... Uh, he most recently played with the Chicago Blackhawks. He's a 6'6 tall defenseman that uh, will provide a lot more grit and physicality on the blue end, on the blue lines, I meant to say, or the back end. However, he's not going to fulfill the offense that uh, Mark Giordano had, but I think the Calgary Flames could use a little more size and grit. As this past season with the Chicago Blackhawks, he played in 55 games. He had one goal, seven assists for eight points and a plus one in 36 penalty minutes. Overall, in his NHL career, where he played with the Buffalo Sabres, and most notably, we you know, he played for the Colorado Avalanche, as he was one of the players that was in the thorn of the side for the Calgary Flames during that playoff series back in 2019, which felt like that was 12 years ago. Well, you can probably figure out why. And also, if you remember Nikita Zardov, he was also greeted with Milan Lucic when he made his Calgary Flames debut. So he definitely is a big, tall, lanky defenseman that provides some physicality that uh, I'm going to say 
probably haven't had a Bruiser blue, blue line since Robin Regeer. So that's what I like about this pick, you know, this pickup. Overall in his NHL career with uh, Buffalo, Colorado, and most recently with Chicago, he has played 411 games, scored 23 goals, 60 assists for 83 points, minus 9 overall in his career with 419 penalty minutes. So that's where the physicality comes in. And he's played in 33 Stanley Cup playoff games with 4 goals, 4 assists for 8 points, and a plus 1 in 74 penalty minutes. Most recent time when he was with the Stanley Cup playoffs was in 2020. In the bubble, he played 15 games. He had 3 goals, 2 assists, 5 points for plus 5 and 18 penalty minutes. So I like this signing, or not signing, but uh, pick up it eventually. Probably a restricted free agent signing for the Calgary Flames. I'm going to say he's probably going to get at least $3 million in the cap. So welcome to the Sea Red, Nikita Zardov. I'm going to say you're definitely going to be welcome addition to bring some size and physicality on the blue line. When you'll definitely fit in the top four. And actually, I think Milan Lucci team joke and say, thankfully, they are now on the same team and not have to battle each other. So that was the first trade. So what do you think of the picking up Nikita Zaradov from the Chicago Blackhawks? To fulfill that top four defenseman and, you know, or give up some offense, but add in some size and physicality. So that was trade number one. So trade number two, this time the Calgary Flames traded with the Boston Bruins, as this time they trade away their own third round pick in 2022. That goes to the Boston Bruins. And they acquired a goalie in Daniel Ladar. Is it looked upon that he is likely going to be the backup goalie for Jacob Markstrom? And Daniel Vlar, he is a, a Czech goalie. He was born August 20th, 1997. Originally, he was drafted 73rd overall or 75th overall in the third round in 2015 by the Boston Bruins. His cap hit is only $750,000. So, considering that some goalies were bought out, like a Martin Jones. Or uh, there was Martin Jones that was bought out, as well as uh, yeah, that's the big name that I remember that was bought out. That uh, getting the back of goalie, and there was also James Reimer was also available. That this would be a cheaper option, and he signed for this year and next year at seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. He made his first debut with the Boston Bruins in the twenty twenty Stanley Cup playoffs when Tuukka Rask didn't. Uh, Decided to join in the bubble, and he did play uh, in five games last year. His record, he was two wins, two losses, and a tie, or an overtime loss, I meant to say. With a 340 goals against average and 86 save percentage, I mean, he was brought in for limited relief. I know Swayman definitely has taken over in that for the Boston Bruins, and uh, they signed Vias Allmark in free agent frenzy yesterday in day one, so Boston had a few more extra goalies. Kick it around, so I'm going to say I'm liking this pickup. And another find that it's encouraging with this pickup is one of my obviously inspirations to be more active on YouTube is the hockey guy. And he was over talking about all the news that happened when he does his news of the day videos. And he is a Boston Bruins fan, is one of his three teams. He actually liked Daniel Vladar, so if Shannon on the hockey guy said he likes this and he thought highly of this trade that this might be someone that we could uh, look on in the year and say that was a pretty good pickup for a third round pick. So Daniel Vladar is likely going to be the backup goalie for the Calgary Flames. I mean the other goalies that are still in the system. Well Calgary did not qualify Artem Zagadulin so he is an unrestricted free agent right now. The guy that we picked up from the KHL. We did qualify Tyler Parsons who uh is still in the system, still being stocked in. So we also have Dustin Wolf and then a couple goalies in that Daniel Chelyov and then that uh, Russian goalie, I forgot his name, that we recently drafted, but they're still years away from getting into the system. So I figured we needed a goalie right now. And I think this will be a good pickup based on the limited looks that we got from uh, the Boston Bruins. But for this video, what do you think of the two trades that we made? When we picked up Nikita Zardov from the Chicago Blackhawks, who we also remember him more with his time with the Colorado Avalanche to add some size and physicality on the blue line. 
and Daniel Vidar, who we picked up from the Boston Bruins. A not well-known goalie that was available on the market, but I think for the price and the cap hit and the fact that he is under contract for two more years because he signed an entry-level deal, with the Boston Bruins in this small sample size that he's played, I think we made a good pickup with value in mind. So, what do you think of the two trades? I definitely like the two trades for what they provide for the Calgary Flames right now, but time will tell to see how they fit in. But given what the direction the team has gone now that Free Agent Frenzy has opened up, I think Calgary is trying to get a little bigger and add some more physicality, you know, to suit the coaching style that we have with Daryl Sutter. But these two holes are filled, I'm going to say right now, we have a top four defense and a backup goalie. So anyway, as I like to say, if you want to follow along with this Calgary Sports fans journey, home the Flames, hip and the Roughnecks and Stampeders, I'm Elsie Utah Calgary Sports, on my YouTube channel where I recap games and stories, and it's definitely been a lot more stories recently, as I recently talked about the Seattle Kraken Spanish draft, and then I recap the NHL entry draft on who and what the Calgary Flames did at the NHL entry draft last week. And now with Free Agent Frenzy, this was just the trades video. I'll make a separate video where I'll talk about the players that we actually signed and give my thoughts and feelings on that. But I also do a variety of non-sports content, like chance, like purse vlogs, attempt to call me, and I also do share experience on Monterey Road or Esport event, and I've done a few more vlog on the go videos. So if that all sounds like it'd be interesting to watch, to follow along with this Calgary Sports fans journey, you know what you do, just uh, make sure you hit like and subscribe. I also have my other social links in the description below. And also, I should also touch upon that I also have made a second channel called Brett Hornby Shorts. That channel, I'll exclusively post the shorts, which is the new type of content that is on this platform as well. So, you can check out that channel as well. I want to try to get that channel to at least 100 subscribers. So, I can have my customer Earl... So I can start putting that in the description below instead of the long jumble name. But these are minor trades right now that fulfill an extra need. But with the cap space that the counter flames have, even after with the signings, I'm still hoping that maybe, maybe the counter flames might have a bigger trade up their sleeve. As there's rumors out there, and I've already made a video about it, where I think the counter flames should still consider a play for Jack Eichel in the trade market. So I could throw that nugget in at the end of this video. So what do you think of the trades that we made at the beginning of Free Agent Frenzy? And maybe you can ask, should we make a play for Jack Eichel again? Would it make sense to do it? So anyways, I just want to say thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video or see you in the next video where I'll talk about who we have signed when Free Agent Frenzy has opened up. So I'll see you in that video.